Come on in. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're taking a look at the best episodes in Survivor history. According to IMDb ratings, Survivor fans have long debated which episodes in Survivor's nearly 25-year history are the best. But what if I told you there was a quantifiable way to rank every single episode, and that the users over at the Internet Movie Database have already done it for us? Nearly 700 episodes of Survivor have aired over the years, and most episodes have hundreds of star ratings from IMDb users. It's the most democratic way to rank Survivor episodes, turning it over to the people. And after these rankings, you may no longer believe in democracy. After all, this is the website that has had The Dark Knight as a top five movie of all time for a decade. Suck on that, Jean Dillman. As we look at the IMDb Top 10, I'll explain why I think these episodes in particular were rated so highly by fans, and if I agree with their placement or not. Next week, we'll take a look at the 10 worst episodes in Survivor history according to IMDb user ratings. You don't want to miss that one. But for now, let's take a look at Survivor's 10 best episodes ever according to IMDb. At number 10 is This Is Extortion, episode 11 of Survivor, Winners at War. No surprises here. This is probably the best episode of Winners at War in my book and features probably the greatest single episode performance by a player in Survivor history. With Tony's hat trick of outplaying the extortion advantage, winning immunity, and then blindsiding his biggest threat via plurality. If you love Tony, you love this episode, and a lot of people love Tony. I don't think I'd have this in my top 10, but it is wildly entertaining start to finish, as Tony kicks his game and his edit, 18 confessionals, wowza, into high gear. It's a true masterclass in Survivor gameplay from the King himself, not only in the strategic game as Tony leverages his immunity win into a risky play to eliminate Sophie in a 4-3-2, but also in the social game, as Tony accrues a king's ransom and fire tokens after getting extorted from the edge by two people he never even met in the game. This episode is heavy on several things you're about to realize the fans love. Tony, returning players, big moves, and shocking blindsides. Or maybe they just really love fire tokens. It's one or the other. At number 9 is Greatest of the Greats. Episode 1 of Survivor Winners at War. There are a lot of reasonable criticisms to be leveled at Winners at War, but few moments in Survivor history have been as epic or as hype as the opening moments of that first episode. Watching 19 of the greatest Survivor players ever and Ben descending on the beaches of Fiji one last time to battle it out for not one, but two million bucks. Overall, I think this is an episode that had a mountain of expectations on its shoulders, 20 years of fans dreaming about this showdown, and it delivered on every front, from the exceptional cast of Survivor Legends, recent fan favorites and long gone deep cuts, a brutal and physical opening challenge, and a shocking first boot showing that no one is safe. A truly epic kickoff to the Survivor Super Bowl, so this one makes sense. And if you stopped watching after this episode, you might also think the old school players stood a chance. At number eight is You Get What You Give, episode eight of Survivor David vs. Goliath, otherwise known as the episode where David slew Goliath. I'd argue that Jackets and Eggs is a better episode, but this is the one that cemented David vs. Goliath as one of the greats. This is the second post-merge episode, and the plucky, rootable David alliance are thematically fittingly getting picked off by the Goliath majority. However, via a tip-off from Alec, they not only successfully play an idol to negate the Goliath's votes, but also outplay the Goliath's own idol play on Angelina by splitting their votes from the bottom to take out John. It's always fun when a minority alliance outplay the majority, but the from the bottom vote split led to an off the top rope blindside and John taking his elimination so well almost makes me forgive him for coining Rochacho Blindside. At number 7 is Lie, Cheat, and Steal, the finale of Survivor Cambodia. A good finale with a great and deserving winner, I think this particular episode's ranking is more of an attaboy for Cambodia as a whole. There's a lot to like here. 
I think in particular the final six vote, which was so complicated Jeff had to bust out the whiteboard just to explain it to the audience, was fun. Keith's emotional request to fall on the sword for Kimmy could bring tears to your eyes, as could Jeremy's final tribal speech, and Wentworth growing from survivor obscurity to playing the second best game of the season and coming up just short is the legend-making all-star seasons dream about. Jeremy's unanimous win was also inarguably well-earned. In the pantheon of Survivor finales, this one is up there, but probably just barely sniffs my top 10, but I get why fans would rank it highly. I mean, this episode is even low-key funny. Jeremy trying and failing to get Keith's attention lives in my head rent-free. What is he, a cat? At number 6 is Zipping Over the Cuckoo's Nest, episode 10 of Survivor Karamoan. Another episode highly rated for its blind side, and this one couldn't have come at a better time in the season. Philip's shtick was wearing thin. The three amigos were on the bottom of the merge tribe and are who we, the audience, are meant to root for. This episode goes out of its way to underline the hopelessness of their situation, but pandemonium breaks out at tribal when Malcolm unexpectedly busts out not one but two idols for himself and Eddie, and with Reynold immune, they announce that they're voting for Philip. It's a great blindside, but perhaps my favorite part is Cochrane's giddy joy in the voting booth. Even as his alliance takes a hit, he knows he's witness to Survivor history, and apparently a top 10 episode ever. Overall, not one I would have in my top 10, let alone my top 50, probably. Philip getting blindsided by Malcolm feels good, but like popping a pimple, it's a fleeting pleasure. At number 5 is Banana Etiquette. Episode 6 of Survivor, Heroes vs. Villains. Yeah, now we're talking. This is the only episode on this list that I might argue is too low. For the first and only time this season, the Heroes camp actually manages to be more entertaining than the villains, as Amanda tries to explain to James that his lack of banana etiquette is putting a target on his back. They told me today that there's such a thing as a banana etiquette. Banana etiquette. If you go get a banana, you have to ask every person who's in your vicinity if they would like a banana. <laughs> Which is great, but in my world, if your ass is hungry, you go get a banana. Add on to that the absurd foot race and James calling Colby Superman in a fat suit, and wow, I actually like the heroes here. With both tribes going to tribal, the heroes somewhat expectedly vote out James for his injury and lack of banana etiquette, but the villains' six-person majority decide to split votes between Russell and Parvati, a foolproof plan if everyone follows suit. Tyson does not and changes his vote to Parvati, and Russell plays his idol for Parvati, and Tyson is sent home in a vote so incomprehensible, not even the players there knew what was happening. It's one of the most iconic blindsides of all time, and the amount of credit to give Russell is still debated by fans to this day. Just an intensely entertaining episode front to back, even if it cuts short the amount of Tyson coach pep talks we could have had this season. At number 4 is It All Boils Down to This, the finale of Survivor Winners at War. I'm pretty surprised at this one. The first part of this episode is an experience in frustration, as both Denise and especially Ben all but throw in the towel, and first boot Natalie returns from the edge and nearly plays spoiler to Tony and Sarah, who ran the season top to bottom. Still, there is a lot to like this episode. For one, post Ben, it does feel like the epic conclusion this season deserves, with Tony, Natalie, Michelle, and Sarah all playing their hearts out. No live reunion due to COVID let the episode run basically the full three hours, giving it room to breathe. Tony and Sarah's fire-making showdown is an emotional conclusion to their three-season arc. All three finalists played very different games and all had unique pitches, and it genuinely does feel like a goodbye to this era of Survivor. Overall, this episode's high placement is probably more of a reflection of IMDb's love for Winners at War as a whole, but I could also see this getting high marks just for being something enjoyable to experience in the spring of 2020. At number 3 is Head of the Snake, Episode 6 of Survivor Kagayan. I wouldn't have it quite this high, but this is probably a top 10 episode for me, featuring one of the best blindsides ever in one of Survivor's best ever seasons. This is the Sarah blindside episode, where she plays the middle between the two main alliances too hard, gets too cocky, and gets taken out. The edit laying it on thick at every turn. I never expected to be 
the decision maker. So it's, it truly is a predicament, but whichever side I go, I'm sitting pretty because I will decide the fate of this game. It's tough to argue with such a great merge tribal. It's a genuine roller coaster as the Apari Alliance scramble last minute at the reveal of Tony's idol. Tony places idol on LJ. LJ returns the favor and places idol on Tony. Both are wrong and the target is Jeffra, which ends up not mattering anyway because Cass flipped her vote to Sarah. It's one of Survivor's most exciting tribal councils ever. It blew the season wide open. It was a true roller coaster and a tale of comeuppance. Plus, if you look real hard, you can see Tony making fun of Spencer. Come on, even things happening in the background are 10 out of 10. At number two is You Call Wheel Hall, episode eight of Survivor Cambodia. Continuing our theme of epic blindsides and just desserts, this is the Wentworth Will Not Count episode. Cambodia spent seven previous episodes building up Andrew Savage as the smarmiest man alive condescending, egotistical, and crying about how hot his wife is, Savage is probably the best villain of this era and a top 10 character of the 30s for me. But his empire came crashing down when he and the rest of the Majority Alliance failed to split votes on the Witch's Coven, and an exceptional idol play from Wentworth, where she negated the most votes via idol in history, sent Savage home in a blindside you can't help but cheer at. Wentworth truly became a survivor legend, earns her keep on this cast, and fulfills the second chance theme with an exclamation mark right here. And the cherry on top? An amazing reward to a survivor cafe shared by Keith and friends, where Keith has the time of his life driving everyone around in a tuk-tuk. Absolute wholesome king. R.I.P. The best episode in survivor history as rated by IMDb users is like Selling Your Soul to the Devil and My Wheels Are Spinning, episodes 10 and 11 of Survivor Cambodia. So these episodes, the Sierra and Steven boots respectively, are technically two episodes, but aired together in one night, so IMDb considers them one episode. Maybe people were happy with the two-for-one deal, but can somebody make it make sense? Every other episode here, I've understood why it's rated highly, even if I disagree, but this one has me at a loss. I went to the user reviews for this one hoping for some clarity, but there was only one, calling it another astonishing epidote. Uh huh. By no means are these episodes bad, but I'd hardly call them top 10, let alone top 1 episodes ever. Look, the nighttime challenge is cool, the elements are truly brutal and that's fully on display, and Abby calls Steven poopy pants. These are solid, well-edited, post-merge workhorse episodes of Survivor, but a true outlier in the rest of this top 10 where finales and huge blindsides abound. Were Joey Amazing fans giving this episode 10s, satisfied at Fishback overplaying himself out of the game after coming for the Golden Boy all season? Maybe it's the Wentworth fans giving the tens, happy that she found her second idol. Or were foot fetishists cooking the books here? Yeah, let's go with that. There you have it, the 10 best episodes in Survivor history as ranked by IMDb users slash perverts. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What would you have in your top 10? Let me know in the comments, and don't miss next week where we take a look at the 10 worst episodes in Survivor history as voted on by IMDb users. Trust me guys, it's a doozy. Got nothing else for ya. If you think I have good banana etiquette, like and subscribe and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.